Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thanks for attending this session, Cloud Native Java Application Development with Micro Profile and Open Liberty. Uh, I am Emily Jiang from IBM. I'm the Cloud Native Architect and also Chief Advocate. So I speak uh, at uh, many conferences and uh, also is um, I, I do the like uh, spend a, a lot of time to work on the open source projects to drive forward with uh, cloud native application development. So I spend a lot of time on the um, micro profile and Jakarta EE and also the, the devoted a lot of effort on the, their implementation on open liberty. So uh, with this session, please um, ask any questions you have. I will try to reserve a few minutes to answer your questions. Because I talk about uh, cloud native, right? So what is uh, cloud demand for these uh, cloud native applications? Obviously, everything you run in the cloud will, will just uh, like um, cost money. and. Uh, the, the application you need to run in the cloud need to be really small and fast in order to save you save you money. Also, at, in this title, I'm uh, like uh, concentrate on the Java applications. If you want to run the Java application, the first thing you will need to have a JVM. Again, you, you, you will need a very performant JVM, small memory footprint and a fast startup. Uh, we have done a compare benchmark uh, compare between OpenG9 and Hotspot. It's turned out uh, uh, for the memory footprint uh, and also startup up time, OpenG9 is, um, is really, really uh, good. It's a CPU like a six, it's a simply a CPU 40% on the memory and also 30% faster with shared classes and a quick start of this uh, configuration. And the next, let's talk about um, the characteristics about cloud and native applications. Cloud and native applications, obviously, you, they need to communicate um, uh, with each other. So the um, uh, commonly used communication method is RESTful. So it's basically they will use the HTTP and to send the messages and etc. And also the cloud and native applications need to be configurable. Uh, so you can configure in the uh, like a cloud environment, uh, any in the, uh, the database or the Kubernetes and etc. without restarting your application. And also your application need to be very re resilient. It's the kind of tolerant to any kind of faults. Uh, again, it needs to be discoverable. So it's um, your cloud and native app application need to advertise itself is uh, when you go to a URL, you, you can find out, uh, uh, I mean, what uh, it does. Again, cloud native application need to be very secure. So you should uh, prevent from any kind of unauthorized um, uh, access to be uh, accepted. Um, in order to uh, fix the issues and monitor our application, and uh, they need to be traceable and uh, monitorable. Lastly, your cloud and native application need to be very intelligent. It should be able to communicate with the cloud infrastructure, tell the infrastructure where, well, whether it's kind of the healthy or able to receive requests and et cetera. Luckily, I mean, the, if you need to like um, uh, figure out all these kind of the, like uh, the, uh, requirement for the cloud native application without any help, that's going to be a very, very daunting task. Uh, with that in mind, and uh, there's a really uh, good uh, open source standard micro profile. I bring you micro profile to help you to develop your cloud native applications so that uh, you can just uh, concentrate uh, on the like uh, your business logic. So is, uh, you don't need to worry about, uh, I mean, how to secure it, uh, or how to configure it and come up with all sorts of different um, kind of the uh, labor manage all kind of the things yourself. 
macro profile is um, uh, geared towards um, uh, cloud native applications, and it provides you with many APIs annotations uh, for you to use. Micro profile is under Eclipse Foundation, governed by the Micro Profile Working Group, and IBM, Red Hat, Oracle, Microsoft, uh, and Tommy Tribe, and um, uh, some uh, Java user group such as Ajax, Atlanta Jack, uh, IJAG, um, and also recently, and um, uh, Prampton from China also joined the uh, Micro Profile Working Group. So it's a completely, this uh, um, project is completely community driven, very lightweight, um, uh, use very lightweight process. With this, you can use many, like uh, there are um, many implementations to support, uh, like uh, to um, uh, offer you APIs. So basically for you, for you, in order to use the APIs from micro profile, you need to use choose one of the implementations. So as I mentioned earlier, I work uh, um, on the project called Open Liberty and also WebSphere Liberty, they both um, uh, support these uh, APIs. As a matter of fact, uh, Open AP uh, Liberty was used uh, um, to drive micro profile releases in the uh, past uh, couple of years. And also there's uh, Wildfly, uh, and also Quarkus, uh, Halidon, and uh, Apache Tommy EE, Kumulus EE, et cetera, so, and the Piara for you to choose from as well. This, this basic chart is about uh, the release uh, cadence for micro profile. As you can see, it's moved really fast. Uh, uh, at the moment, we are trying to release the micro profile six which is the baseline, it's uh, aligned with the Jakarta E10 core profile. It was just uh, being released, uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, lately. It's uh, uh, like uh, 22nd of September, it was released. And we are trying to release uh, micro profile six uh, with uh, some uh, uh, specification update, major update like metrics, a new specification about um, micro profile telemetry and uh, a couple others have some update like open API and GWT. I can take a uh, will towards the end and talk a little bit more about um, what's coming next. In micro profile, so it's, um, I kind of uh, um, put uh, these uh, specifications, uh, I mean, into two buckets. One is platform release, one is the standalone release. So in the platform release, you can see these four, these are eight blue square. Um, they are in the platform release. When we say micro profile five, so we mean this platform release. And also there's a reactive stream operators, reactive messaging, context propagation, GraphQL, LRA. So they are standalone release, haven't merged into platform release as yet. Um, so it's uh, with the time goes by and we, like uh, analyze whether some standard standalone release maybe they, they become cool and they can move to platform release. So in the next few slides, I'm going to talk us through the how can you use micro profile to create cloud and native applications and uh, they can communicate with each other and then upload it to the cloud and how, how to do it. So first you use um, um, uh, JAXS to create uh, your REST for um, microservices or cloud native applications. So you use, you create uh, two classes, one is um, uh, application, uh, like uh, the other one is uh, JAXS resources. You use annotation at the pass, or you define the get uh, operation and then define the median type. When you create a, like cloud native applications, you need to create a loosely coupled. Often in order to achieve loosely coupled, you use a CDI. So this is uh, uh, directly from a Descartes EE context and dependency injection. So you do not need to uh, create your own instance. The CDI will manage all the instances for you. So you just directly uh, add inject and then inject the instance. And for the payload, uh, it's often like I uh, use uh, JSON, uh, JSON 
as a payload is for the uh, data transform on, on the wire, you use JSON, you just need to say produce JSON, and then use this is a type, and then you can describe the type. In order for um, kind of this result, uh, con I mean, uh, is the inventory list, and then convert to be a JSON format. So that's directly uh, being handled by the JSON based implementation, such as Open Liberty will do that for you. So you don't need to worry about that for the serialization and deserialization. For the um, collecting the multiple microservices, the basically is, uh, we use the specification called a micro profile REST client. So like A want to connect a, a core service of B. So how can um, uh, this be wired together? So basically, so B has a service, for example, called um, get properties. In A, you can directly create, a, uh, create an instance or a, a interface of this service, get the properties, and then annotate it with register register client. And then in A, in A's uh, other class, you can directly add inject the REST client and then call the default REST client dot properties and uh, can evoke this uh, service B's um, uh, method to get properties. Uh, in order for A to directly go to B, actually you also need to configure the URL. So it's, um, this is a fully qualified class name, system client slash MP REST slash URL. And then this will be the B's uh, endpoint. So whenever you call default rest client dot get properties, the system automatically go to look here, find all this URL, and then invoke a B's get properties. For the documentation, so it's, we use the macro profile open API. Basically, this is uh, directly adopting macro profile open APIs, adopting the uh, open API uh, specification. And uh, and with the implementation Swagger, this um, micro profile Open API so directly uh, uses a, like as a output. If you see on the right hand side, this is the output uh, like as a, a micro profile Open API, like a host port and slash uh, Open API. This is an uh, output. You can see this directly is a Swagger output. In Open Liberty, we also have. Uh, additional endpoint and slash UI. So again, we integrate a Swag UI so you can directly invoke the um, um, microservices cloud native application to any endpoint. For the secure uh, microservices, uh, secure cloud native application, we use micro profile JWT. So micro profile JWT is utilize the JWT and then create a two, add a two additional claim, one in the UK and the other one in the groups. So it's, um, uh, and also it's uh, uh, basically it's, uh, uh, open up the JWT token and then specify this, uh, these two claims. When the backend receive it, it uh, gets uh, the whole information. And then the backend, uh, if it's secured, or normally it's recommended ways to use rules allowed in the um, uh, decoder security. So you can specify which role allowed to access this, um, this endpoint. In this case, when the uh, JWT token arrived and uh, then the backend system will check which group do you belong to. If it's admin, yes, you can access this. Otherwise, uh, you are not allowed. The next thing uh, we discussed, I mentioned earlier about create a, a very secure um, uh, cloud and native applications. Uh, how to achieve that? Micro profile for tolerance offers uh, fallback and uh, bulkhead and circuit breaker and retry uh, also the fallback. So it's uh, all this is annotation based. So for you to, uh, to specify if something goes wrong, maybe you want to retry. And uh, also if it's uh, constantly get uh, like a uh, throttled and um, you can specify like a circuit breaker basically is a lockdown and like uh, you uh, feedback to the caller straight away and saying okay this is uh, this is uh, down the other things that you can control how many concurrent uh, requests allowed for this service so you use a book head pattern so this is um, um micro profile or uh, for tolerance the other things if you know um, the 12 factor app. 
for creating uh, like uh, microservices or cloud native applications is uh, uh, one of the factors is about externalize your configuration. So in this case, you don't don't, don't need to like a risk a re uh, like um, uh, deploy your microservices or redeploy your cloud native applications whenever you need to change the configuration. So basically, you need to externalize your configuration. Luckily, macro profile config can provide this facility for you. So in your code, you can directly inject the property. And where this property is specified, it could be anywhere. It could be like a, when the specified location, meta macro profile dash config or properties, environment variable, system properties. So this is all kind of the out of box, um, um, uh, like uh, the config sources. Or you can specify maybe in the uh, Kubernetes config map, or in the database. So it's uh, in any, the, uh, any places uh, you can just specify. And then also in your application, you just saying, okay, this is my config source and look there for these properties. Uh, again, the other characteristic for this config, uh, micro profile config is each config source have uh, like um, priority. We call it the ordinal. So it's, uh, if you specify the same um, property in multiple places, the, uh, the the value uh, uh, the the value I mean uh, from the config source with the highest config order you know, will be used. So in these circumstances here is this one has um, 150 and this one has 100. So this is the this value we'll get will be true. So next so we want to uh, look at uh, the um, uh, basically is um, uh, cloud. So it's uh, with all what I described earlier, you can create your cloud and native applications. So next thing, let's go to next step, which is the deploy to the cloud. If you want to deploy your cloud and native application to the cloud, and you will need to consider health metrics and tracing aspect. For health, uh, micro profile health is here to help directly work up perfectly with the Kubernetes. It has three annotations, readiness and liveness and a startup. Um, and also it exposes three endpoint, slash micro, uh, slash health, slash ready, slash health, slash live, slash has a slash started. Directly it's uh, work very well with Kubernetes um, as the props. The next thing is about metrics. Metrics are very key. So is um, uh, just uh, tell your like uh, the, a detailed operation um, uh, like uh, people about how well this um, um, cloud native application is uh, doing, and also is be able to send some warning sign. In order to do that, is micro profile metrics provide a, a number of APIs uh, annotations for you to choose from. So basically, you can say at times to monitor how fast this operate, this um, uh, operation can return the request. And there's uh, many other annotations as well. The next thing is uh, uh, you also need to think about uh, is, uh, if something goes wrong, how can I figure out what's wrong? So luckily, microprofile open tracing is uh, propagated the correlation ID. So when you do the uh, invocation of one microservice and then run into the, that microservice, uh, uh, I mean, uh, called a uh, different microservice. And uh, with this, uh, like a, a, a correlation ID trace, um, a, a correlation ID propagation, and then it's uh, the invocation will be able to chain up. So you know, it's, it's a kind of one uh, request and uh, how many services involved. If something goes wrong, you can look at a year ago, Zipkin, uh, and uh, be able to find out uh, where the problem is. And uh, the beauty is, if you use the GXRS uh, and uh, all the trace will be done for you automatically. If you want to add additional tracing information uh, and you, uh, on the method which are not uh, like uh, GXRS um, uh, method, like a uh, get and put and etc., you can use annotation and traced. Uh, let's uh, uh, just uh, give you a quick uh, demo. Uh, I mean, about uh, create uh, like um, uh, how to create a cloud and native applications. And uh, uh, let me just briefly talk about uh, how to get started. 
So luckily we have a start.micro provider IO. So you can just create some Maven Gradle um, cloud native applications. And also there's a plugins. If you use VS Code, there's a VS Code plugin. If you in IntelliJ, you can use this uh, IntelliJ plugin. So they directly use the same backend uh, as the start.microprofile.io. Um, the other thing is the Open Liberty also has a starter. So it's, if you go to the start.openliberty.io, and then you can create a, a cloud native applications, you can use specified Jakarta E version, microprofile version. It will uh, give you a cloud native applications. So let me quickly uh, do a demo here. So in order to save time, I already created uh, like uh, two uh, created uh, like uh, two uh, microservices, service A and service B. And actually, if you want uh, like uh, to get us uh, get it started from scratch, so you could uh, just uh, do like this. Is uh, if you use the IntelliJ, uh, if you use the VS Code and uh, like I am, so you, you can do uh, do that. And then is uh, and then you can specify group ID uh, and also uh, later on. And also we said demo. And you can choose which version. And also here, it will say which version supports the micro profile five that we list. At the moment, uh, this starter list is uh, only one open liberty. And then you can choose the Java SE version. And then you can choose whether you want a Maven or Gradle. And uh, later on, you can choose, if you are trying to learn about it, you can choose all of them. So it's uh, to learn about uh, the technology. And then you can just say, uh, choose a folder and then generate uh, to this project. Yeah, and then you can get started. So uh, so it's, um, uh, I already done that step. And uh, also is uh, I created two services, one is a service A and a service B, and I already started. And the service A, actually both the service running on Open Liberty. So it's, um, so it's they are running on Open Liberty. You can see it's the own the Open Liberty Maven plugin. The other thing is uh, uh, when you can just specify dependency. So MicroProfile 5 is automatically all the APIs defined by MicroProfile 5 are available to you. Um, and um, so it's, uh, this is just as uh, uh, like uh, the uh, just as application. Uh, and uh, also the service A and the service B, uh, like um, uh, both running on Open Liberty. And uh, if you like, uh, if you service A directly want to talk to service B, so it's, uh, you can see service B. So basically, uh, has the operation is called uh, do something. Is a have parameter and is a get operation. So service A, so directly and uh, create an in uh, interface uh, to uh, mimic what a service B does, so do something as a pass prime and the get operation. And then basically it's a, you just uh, register rest client. And then in service A, you can directly like uh, call into the, uh, like uh, do the injection, inject uh, like a rest client and service. And then you can uh, directly call into like uh, this, uh, uh, backend like a service or do something in order to specify like uh, where service B lives. So it's um, uh, you can you can see here the fully qualified uh, uh, fully quali qualified class name and then service B's um, backend so service B's uh, endpoint. So you can you can see that. So for the uh, injection, you can see here. I directly uh, trying to inject a, a property called a conferences. So the conference uh, basically is uh, defined, uh, this property defined in the micro profile uh, that configured all properties. So it's, um, uh, and then is, um, and then you can display 
display it and then it's uh, use it. So it's uh, uh, in here in my is uh, currently is running is on the uh, local host 9080 is uh, if I see uh, here. So this is uh, according to the according to the backend. So hello G4K. So if I because this is a, a service is a, a running at the moment. Uh, if I go to change the property for a value uh, such as if I say uh, if I say G4K live and I save that. Now I go to the here, you can see it's automatically picked up. So this is the liberty feature of the demo mode. So the other thing is the kind of the, uh, I uh, quickly just show you here. So it's um, uh, in, the, in the service B, as you can see, actually it's, uh, uh, I can sometimes sleep and sometimes through exceptions, but in service A, you never get any uh, errors and et cetera. That's because I use the for tolerance, I did a retry timeout uh, and also is, um, uh, yeah, provide a fallback informa uh, uh, information. And also is, uh, I can demonstrate uh, service um, is uh, like um, uh, a documentation. I use uh, open API. Uh, this is a kind of additional uh, tracing in, uh, additional metrics information. I mean, let's go back to here, uh, like uh, as you see. So it's a um, metrics information. So it's if you do um, a host and port and metrics, you can see all the metrics. You can even see the, the fault tolerance, some timeout information and retry information and, and et cetera. So the other thing is the, so the, the health. So you can see so there's a kind of the, uh, you do the uh, health, there's some live, you get a live information and the ready and the started, uh, you get all this um, uh, information to use. It's uh, with that, let me see. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, So it's uh, metrics and uh, tracing and uh, demonstrate the, the, the config uh, and uh, similar thing is also the you secure, secure your backend. So it's uh, as uh, quickly explain the secure, sec how to secure it. So this is a service B you secure like a, um, this backend. So you use the rules allowed, it's just to say the protected able to access this uh, um, backend. And in the service uh, A, uh, if I call it, uh, and then like, uh, so the, the resilience, so it's, uh, what is it again? So I directly is, um, uh, call, call the uh, service B, however, I need to um, manage my DWT token. So this is kind of trying to uh, like uh, set up a token. And uh, when I invoke uh, the backend, so it's, I use uh, the Jack as a client this time to invoke it. So it's, uh, uh, however, I need to pass in the GWT token. So this token, here is a uh, demonstrate how to generate a token. So you can see here, I need to set a UPN and also set a group because this group is protected. So it can access the backend. If I change the backend here, I will say um, super for example. Uh, if I go back uh, to, the, to here and uh, See, I just uh, get uh, uh, like uh, I couldn't access the backend. So you can see that it was uh, secured. Is um, uh, let's see other. So that's uh, pretty much the demo. So I have not seen any any questions. 
So I will, uh, let me see. Okay, you so this is, yeah, I can see the uh, question here is, uh, are there a major difference uh, in features between Jakarta EM micro profile other than uh, modularity? So it's uh, the major, I think a micro profile and Jakarta EM are complementary uh, to each other. So it's, um, so it is uh, basically uh, very often you will need to use uh, both to create a cloud native um, uh, applications. This uh, Jakarta EM has many uh, specifications and uh, micro profile, uh, yeah, is a uh, utilized uh, few Jakarta EE very useful specifications such as CDI, JAXRS, uh, JSON B and JSON P, uh, and etc. But um, most of the time, we, you will need to use both technologies. Uh, so, it's uh, why are there no JAXRS library uh, in Open Liberty? Uh, there are JAXS uh, WS um, uh, support in uh, Open Liberty because JAXS uh, WS is a part of the uh, is a part of the Jakarta EE um, like um, uh, platform and uh, Open Liberty support that. There are there are. If you um, please get uh, in touch with me uh, afterwards and uh, we can uh, uh, talk more about. Um, uh, I can help you with that, Alex. So it's uh, uh, that's the demo. I mean, like uh, we have uh, three more minutes. Uh, uh, I would uh, like to mention a little bit more about the cloud. Please uh, let me continue. It's uh, for the um, cloud native application development. So you you use as I mentioned. So it's um. The config can be specified in the config map uh, and then you inject into it. And the health can directly, uh, directly work with Kubernetes um, readiness probe and liveness probe and et cetera. And also the metrics uh, and you can use uh, uh, is a Grafano dashboard and et cetera offered in the cloud native, uh, um, uh, in the cloud infrastructure. And then because of data in the open metrics, and for the tracing, it works really well with um, Istio because it's uh, automatically uh, have this uh, required uh, headers propagated. So it's in summary, Istio and Macro Profile work really nicely together because the Istio is the infrastructure, and Macro Profile is um, a framework to be able to make your cloud native application work really well with um, uh, cloud. It's, um, uh, I use a couple more minutes to talk you about a roadmap for macro profile. So it's, uh, at the moment, we are working on the macro profile six, which is uh, aligned with the Jakarta E10 core profile. And plus we have a new spec called the telemetry and also the uh, major uh, specification uh, macro profile metrics, major, major update of uh, well, macro profile metrics and then two uh, like uh, updated spec. So for micro profile metrics, uh, 5.0, we want to um, uh, enable the uh, implementations about micro profile metrics, be able to um, adopt a micrometer because micrometer is uh, become more and more popular. And also there's a lot uh, like a monitoring system support that. So it's uh, stay tuned. We are going to release this very soon. The other one is uh, telemetry. This is directly adopt uh, CNCF open telemetry tracing. Previously, I talked about uh, 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 open tracing. However, open tracing and open sensors merge together into uh, telemetry. And then in the micro profile, we adopt open telemetry. Uh, and then we are going to release telemetry 1.0. And then also uh, we'll move micro profile open tracing to be a standalone and add this one to platform. So this is a useful links for you to get started. I want to call out openliberty.io slash guide. So go there to learn all the micro profile technologies and plus the Jakarta. I wrote some blog about work with Istio and, and Spring comparison. Uh, finally, uh, and uh, I can, I mean, uh, let me end on the, the book I um, authored practical cloud